Hey everyone, Paul SM. Welcome to part two. Well, I guess it's part 1.2 of the uh, Porsche 911 GT2 video build. Uh, last time we dealt with looking through the box, we dealt with the wheels, which look absolutely beautiful. And today we're going to get this to primer, paint, and clear coat as well. You got to bear with me. I've been ill for the past four days with a really bad cold, and now I have COVID. So. I've really struggled doing this voiceover. Um, it's like a 50 minute voiceover. It has killed me. It's actually making me breathless doing it. Um, so bear with me. There's a lot of coughing through this build. And I might be wheezing and sounding rough. Yes. So, yeah, I think I'll be doing short videos for the next few uh, days while I get this sorted because that was definitely a challenge doing a voiceover that long <laughs> but anyway yeah so we're going to get it all prepped primed painted and 2k today um we're going to new airbrush to try out controversially i know um and uh we're going to get the gorge red down on this which is a wonderful color and i'm hoping it's going to look great when it's done there we are so let's jump straight into the build after these words hey everyone please subscribe to the channel click the bell notifications get notified of our latest videos give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment i do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind i may not reply to them all but they are all appreciated and there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products i use in my videos you now have the chance to support the video content creation by using patreon or the paypal me link in the description down below all the videos will always remain free to watch this is just your chance to help support the videos okay so we're going to start by going through the instructions and marking off all our parts again need to be prepped for primer and paint quite a bit to do on this one we've got some side skirts to put on and fill we've got the rear spoiler to glue together and fill it's a little bit fiddly this rear spoiler. It was a bit of a pain. It took a lot of sanding to do. So bear that in mind me building the kit. You're going to spend a bit of time with this rear spoiler. It should be completely seam free. And that is what we're going to go for. So we're going to get it all cleaned up. Using our Tamiya snips. UMP sanders. Get it all de-sprued. All de-seamed. So using our sponges and our thinny sticks. Get it cleaned up. And then we're going to glue it together. And we're going to fill it with some CA glue. Like I say, really, really fiddly to do. An absolute pain, if I'm completely honest. But we did get there in the end. And if you do a good job and it's completely seam free, it's going to look really, really good. So it's time well spent. Although it is a bit of a pain. Some of the older Tamiya kits, and this isn't even all that old, can be a bit of a pain with some of the fills. The Porsches... The 959 is the same on the rear spoiler uh, as is this. So you can see the seam line there where we're gluing right now. That is all going to need to be filled. So we've got my Tamiya uh, Extra Thin uh, EMA Plasti Weld Mix. I'm going to glue it all together and squeeze it and try and get some molten plastic out of there because that way we've got less filling to do. And it's a case of going all the way around systematically. And gluing it all together. Now, this was filmed well over a week ago. As I said, I am suffering from COVID at the minute. I've had a really bad cold. And my voice has been absolutely shot. This is the first time I've been able to speak for more than a couple of minutes. So I coughed my guts up. Uh, although I am a little bit breathless. <laughs> it has taken the wind out of my sails a little bit. So bear with me I sound a bit wheezy. Or a bit out of breath. Um, I can't be helped, unfortunately. Uh, so with those parts glued together. We can move our attention to other parts. If you look on the instructions on step 11, you can see it pointing to all these extra parts and even moving. So there are bonnet pins and parts of the race car. Obviously, the road going car doesn't require them. So we're going to remove them with our trumpeted chisels and then sand them nice and smooth and get rid of them. There's an aerial antenna on the roof we're going to get rid of as well. And again, trumpeted chisel. The great chisels are these, they're the master tool ones. Really cheap. I've had these for years, um, and they do a really good job. Once you got the most of the plastic off, hit it with the UMP sanders until it's gone. Same on the front. Put a bit of masking tape on the front panel line to protect it, so we don't lose the demarcation of it. And just going around until we get rid of all those points. 
And again, take your time. The better the job you do here, the job you do, the job you do, the better it'll look in the long run. So just be careful in what you're doing. All right, be very careful. Now, we don't have a fuel filler cap on that front right wing or fender. Uh, luckily, the aftermarket resin parts we got off Caesar includes a template to scribe that, so we're going to do that in a bit. But right now, we're going to get my Holly scriber, and we're going to rescribe some of the panel lines. Not only to get rid of some of the dust and debris in there, but also to just make them a bit more uh, prominent, should we say. Get a bit more of a wash in there, a bit easier. Uh, other than that, it's actually quite a clean body. It's not too bad. Over each side of the front wings, down the front bumper. But pretty easy clean up. It's that spoiler and the side skirt are the problem areas because they just require quite a bit of filling. They really do. They're a bit of a pain. So just careful rescribing. Really like these holly scribers. You literally fingertip holding them, so you've got good control over them. They're nice and sharp. Very rarely slip with them, which I do with some of the handle ones. I've got a nice fun tech one, but I'm a forever slipping. Um, whereas this, I just seem to have more control. Like I say, it does a good job. Don't go too mad. You're not trying to scribe through the plastic. I see a lot of people rescribe and they go absolutely crazy doing it. Again, panel line goes down the back. Mostly with Tamiya, they follow like the door shuts and the roof lines. But they always have to appear somewhere and on the rear bumpers. They just go straight down the back. So pretty easy to take care of. Just some careful sanding. Don't go too mad. Don't use too harsh and abrasive because you don't want to reshape or reprofile the parts. But obviously you need to uh, sand it enough to get rid of the seam lines. And then we're going to hit it with a 3000 bit of uh, a 3M Trizect. This is the sanding pads I'm going to use from now on. I've invested in a load of them. They're not cheap. They're like £5 a piece for a 75mm one. So we've got some 3000 6000 and 8000 is still on the way. And they are great. They're really fine polishing pads and they just do a great job. So I'm just scuffing up all the surface in preparation for primer. And again, on the rear spoiler as well, clean up some glue marks on the top piece. I did wonder whether to bother putting this in or leave it separate, but I opted to put it in and glue it in place. And I'm just going to clean up where we glued the lower half of the spoiler first. Then we can come in in a bit and get some shea glue in there and fill it in. So take it right back as far as you can with the sander to begin with, and that will show you what you're left to fill. Like I say, a bit of a pain this. Quick test fit, and it doesn't fit too bad at all. Yeah, not too bad. Not my favourite rear spoiler on the Porsche. I like the 993 Turbo spoiler on this car. But it is what it is. So we've got UMP 100 180 Thinny Stick. And we're really going to go to town on this. And sand it right back. Like I say, it's quite a bit of material to remove. It is quite a deep gap we've got to fill in. And of course, should you choose to not do this, that's totally up to you. But for me, I want to fill it in. And I'm just checking to see how it feels. And to be fair, we got rid of quite a bit of it with the sander, but we're still going to have to fill it. So we've got some Bob Smith Industries CA glue with one of the precision tips. I'm just going to lightly apply a bead of glue all along that seam line. Like so. There we go, nice and careful. What's going to do around the front, because the front part can be seen as well, and that should be seen free. And then after that's dried, left it for a couple of hours, we can hit it with our sander. So I'm going to make this look really simple, like I did it in about five minutes. It probably took me a couple of hours to do this quite easily. I had to fill sand, fill sand, fill sand. It took a lot of work to do. It really did. It was an absolute nightmare, but we got there in the end and it is virtually seam free. It did a really good job. So quite happy with that. But like I say, if you need to do more, don't be afraid of doing more and don't be afraid of going at it with a bit of force. I mean too much. You don't want to snap it, but it is going to need some vigorous sanding, especially the CA glue. And just be careful of the surrounding parts. And like I say, you don't want to reshape any areas or edges because it just ruins the look of the car. 
And then like on these edges, we can hit it with the buffer to clean it up. It's a case of keep going until you're happy. Quick test fit again. On the front, where the actual intake is, there was a bit of a gap, so I had to fill that with CA glue as well. So it was a case of filling it with CA glue, hitting it with kicker, and sanding until it was happy. This is the template Caesar made for me for the front wing. So you line it up like so. Line it up at the corner of that A pillar. And the front headlight. And there we go. We've got my pin vise with a pin in it, nice and sharp. I'm just going to go around and round and around and around. So we've got enough depth and definition. Not pressing too hard, just applying a little bit of pressure. There we go. Very good. Make sure I haven't gone through, which we haven't, so that's all good. Now what we'll do, we'll hit that a bit of Tammy Extra Thin, and it will soften the edges of the uh, scribed parts. And there we go. Very handy. So thank you for that, Caesar. Very useful template. And then we've got our front intake. So the front intake has a little intake. I assume it's a brake cooler and a little spotlight, but Caesar made these for me. And they're just intake, so we're going to just get these off the uh, supports using a scalpel. Be nice and gentle. There we go, and then clean it up with the UMP customizable cut to shape. There we go, looking good. The fit of these is actually really good. Straight in. There we are. We've got the indicator lens to go on the other side. That looks good to me. Looking on the inside, I'm going to glue from the inside. So a couple of dabs of Bob Smith's again. A little bit out of focus. Do apologize. And then same on the other side. Oh, get the right way. There we go. Perfect fit. There we go. Very nice. Bit of a different look than the uh, original car. And now these sides go. So I'm going to use the Tamiya white glue. It's a little bit thicker than the green. Now the generous bead across there. And then make sure you got the side orientated the correct way. Now these weren't too bad. These didn't need a lot of filling. Let's only in a couple of spots. The glue took care of most of this. So again, in place of the white glue, make sure it's lined up either end. And then squeeze it down and in place. Get it all lined up. And squeeze it together. And then I hit it with some extra thin over the actual seam as well. And then squeeze it. Get some molten plastic out the side, leave that overnight, and then come back the next day. You can sand it, and then you'll have to fill what is left to fill. And luckily, like I say, there wasn't all that much on this. It was actually pretty good. Wasn't too bad at all. Same for the other side. And again, some extra thin into the gap. And then this front split out, we're just going to test fit it. Virtually holds itself on just by the locating points. So that's good. And then the side mirrors, we're just going to take them off the sprue and DC them. Bit of a seam on them, nothing too nasty though. And what I've opted to do is to pin them. So we draw the hole in each side of the uh, body where they are. I put a hole in the bottom of each one. I put a tiny bit of brass rod in there. That way we've got a nice secure mounting point for later on. 
because otherwise you've got to guess and try and hold it with glue while you do it and there we go that's much better so just a little bit of rod glued in and then a hole in the body now the chassis roll cage is all going to be the same color as the body it's all going to be red so we're going to get all this assembled now as well so a bit of cleanup on this just going to use our scalpel to clean up all the seams in case you just run it over be careful don't stab yourself quite a satisfying thing to do this sometimes just until you get rid of all the seam and there's a seam on every part of that so you have to go around the whole thing of course you don't have to but you will see it once it's painted so we are going to paint these in the same red we're not going to gloss it but we are going to paint it in the guards red So a little bit of cleanup, nothing too drastic, nothing too difficult. You use your knife, you can use sanders, whatever way you find works best for you. But for me, for speed and ease, the scalpel just works better. And occasionally, come with a UMB sander. I tend to use the sanders where the sprue connection points are, with a bit on the sprue. So sand that off, hit it with the, uh, the knife then. So we're going to assemble this. Instructions are a little bit tricky assembling this. I'm trying to figure out how it goes. So I've got it looking how it should look in the instructions. And I'm going to test fit either side. There we go, line it up at the top. There we go, get all those connection points in. Then hold it all together and then hit it with the extra thin mix. Hold it again for a few minutes, let the glue dry. And then we can get the rear part in as well. Now we're going to prime in pink because he was spraying red. So we've got some Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in pink. We're going to decant this, let it off gas for a few hours, uh, basically till you can stare it and don't get bubbles. Um, and then we're going to thin it about 10, 20% with Tamiya Lacquer Thin with Retarder. And then at about 16 to 18 PSI, we can spray on some primer. Do like the Tamiya Surface Primer. It is very, very good. People moan sometimes about the hassle of doing it, but I don't think it's too bad at all. I'm not sure if I showed this in the last video. I can't remember if it did show me mixing the paint or not. But anyway, it's here again if it did. So we've got the primer ready to go. This is the MAD uh, touch-up paints I use from time to time. Use this on a few of the projects lately. This bottle cost me £6.95 delivered for about, I think it's 20 mil, roughly. So I'll put it all in the jar just to see how much we get. And then I've mixed some in a medicine cup. And we're going to thin it about 60% with Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner. So I was just judging how much there was. So I like to use Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner. I've used that on all the touch-up paints. Never had an issue yet. I'm sure the Tamiya Lacquer Thinner Retarder will work just fine. But I just like using the Leveling Thinner. I just uh, feel a bit safer using it because I know it worked in the past. So thin it about 60%, give it a good mix up with the Badger paint mixer. We put most of it back into the bottle. What we've got left over, we're going to use to spray the car. And then we can use more of that later on. I'm covered in red paint. It looks like there's been a murder in the paint booth. But hey-ho, it is what it is. So final cleanup on the body. Those side skirts are finally dried. Uh, so we're hitting that up with a UMP sand and sponge. Get rid of the glue marks and the seam. Like I said, it was pretty good. Just needed a... Touch of CA glue in a couple of places, nothing too drastic at all. It's a case of fill, let it dry, sand, fill, repeat, whatever you need to do to get rid of your seams. But please pay attention to the prep. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to, I'm trying to paint it. Trust me, if you spend time with your preparation, you get a much better finish. You'd be much happier with the work you're doing. It is a very, very important step. Now, I did opt to use this paint stand originally. I think I changed my mind a little bit later. I might use it for the paint, uh, but certainly for 2K later, I'll put the other paint stand on. 
Uh, the sides go to the bottom, we've got convenient little mountain points to hold these stands on. So we've hit it with the toothbrush to get rid of any dust, and then we've got some UMP airbrush cleaner on a clean piece of kitchen paper. And we're going to go around and degrease all the body, get rid of any fingerprints, any re residue, whatever could be on there. Uh, and that way we know we've got a nice, safe surface for priming. So once you've gone round, get another clean piece and dry it all off. Like so. And there we go, we're in the booth. Now, I had a tiny little bit of pink primer left in the can. And I thought it's not worth decanting, so I might as well use it to paint the chassis. It's the biggest piece I've got, and it near enough painted the chassis. Not too bad at all. So trick of rattle cans is don't go too heavy at once. Don't try and get it all in one coat. It dries ultra fast. So by the time you've done one bit and you come back, it's more than likely ready for another quick coat. We don't want to hose it on. We don't lose any definition. But at the uh, near empty can, I very nearly painted the entire chassis. So quite good on this. Inside of this is going to be red and um, I think it's half carpeted. I forget what it is now. I'm going to have to look. I'm pretty sure it is half and half, but there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Pink primer on the chassis and the end of the can gone. So happy with that. A little bit of a hair there. Let's get rid of you. It's just a bit of a plastic it was. Shaking the can vigorously to get any last dregs of paint out. Get out. There we go. And then with our Iwata HPC Plus, we're going to put down a few coats of primer. It's going to take about four or five to do. <coughs> Excuse my cough. Loving the Iwata again. As I said last time, the Apex is. I've not been relegated to the draw. Um, I just wanted to get my Iwata back, and I have now. And lo and behold, I got a revolution as well. A point three that I'm going to try for 2K today on this as well i already tested it on the aston martin um it worked well it needed tweaking how i sprayed i wasn't quite putting it on from a far enough distance <coughs> excuse me so we're going to get a much better result today much quicker so the eye waters they optimize the paint better i think they are um a bit more economical on paint but you know, it's a £180 airbrush, so it is going to perform better. Obviously, there's going to be people out there who don't think it warrants extra cost, but I've used these airbrushes before. I've always loved the how hard, uh, the Iwata HPC Plus. Um, here, I had a little bit of um, seam work to take care of. There was a bonnet pin on the bonnet I hadn't quite fully removed, and a little bit of seam on that side skirt, so I just sanded it back, got rid of it, Feathered the edges and was going to retouch this primer on. It all became apparent with the primer coat, which is why a primer is a very important step in your build. And as you can see, applying it back over, as long as you put it on nice and thin, and you feather the edges of the original paint, it'll blend in no problem at all. Uh, but yeah, I've always been a big fan of the iWatch HPC Plus. I've always said it was one of my favourite airbrushes. I'm glad to have it back in the arsenal. I've never had a 0.3 revolution before, so I'm going to interested to see how that performs. It did work very well on the Aston, um, but it just took a little bit of getting used to because all airbrushes spray differently. Like I say, the Apexes, they're not relegated to not being used anymore or replaced. I've just got a few different tools in the Arsenal now, and I will continue to use them. Uh, but I will say, I am getting better paint finishes. I can't argue with that at all. I can see the results in front of my eyes. And especially on the 2K coat later, um, I have to say uh, it does atomize the 2K nicer, in my opinion. Anyway, there we go. With a few coats of Tamiya Pink Primer, it's been left for about eight hours to fully dry. We've got our Guards Red from uh, MAD Paint to go on next. Um, as it's dried, we're going to flat everything back, get rid of any high spots, any dust or debris that's landed in the paint. So we've just got a Tamiya 3000 sponge here. And we're going to go around. We're basically keying the primer while removing any high spots or dust or debris that's landed in the, uh, the paint. Just another important step because every one of these sandbags creates a smoother surface. And you are ultimately going to get a better finish. 
the Tamiya primer dries ultra fast. You can you can sand after about half an hour, no problem at all. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I like it so much. It's just quicker for me to work with. And it really makes red pop. Really does. Saves a lot of coats on red. Um, and just makes the colour pop. There we go. Back in the spray booth. All flatted back. Nice and cleaned up. Hit it with the anti-static brush. We've got our MAD Red Guards Red. Red Guards Red. MAD Guards Red. Like I say, we've thinned it. About 60% with Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner. We're at 16 PSI. I water HPC Plus. I'm just going to put down as many coats as it takes to uh, get it fully covered. Now, I've never had any reactions with these touch-up paints using the Mr. Hobby Thinner. But still, don't go hosing it on. It's bad paint practice uh, all by itself. But... <coughs> You don't want any reactions at all. So thin coats are the way to go. And we're going to alternate from side to side, up and down, crisscross coats, from coat to coat. And off the top of my head, I'm going to guess this one got about seven coats in total. It's hard to remember, really, because it just turns into a big blur of paint because it takes quite a while to do. Probably takes me a good hour because I let everything flash off and off gas. But like I say, time spent here, well worth doing. And again, we're going on and off the uh, the paint. A little bit of dust there. Get off. There we go. We're going on and off the paint, uh, the air, sorry, after every pass. That way, if anything builds up on the needle, it'll blow it off. Maybe not there or not, but I don't tend to most of the time. Do as I say, not as I do. Yep, shouldn't be doing that, but hey, you get in your own bad habits. Sometimes what I tend to do is do three or four passes, then come off for air. Uh, the lacquers don't tend to build up on the needle tips as much as water base, so I think they're a bit more forgiving to use. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. I do apologise. And then underneath, again, give it a few coats of the red, building it up nice and slowly. And the spoilers. So everything's being done at the same time. There was a lot of paint on this. Roll cage, chassis, spoiler, mirrors, the body. Lots and lots and lots to do. So make sure for every coat, you pick a part up and put a coat on every single bit. And that way you'll get matching colours. But nice colour guards, Red. It really is. The camera whites it out a bit. makes it look a bit pinky. It is a nice dark red in real life. But the camera does make it a bit pink at the end. Door handles as well. Like I say, lots of paint on this. Body colour because we've got the roll cage and what have you. But best to get it out of the way now. Uh, we're not going to clear all that. Literally what will be cleared is the mirrors, the door handles, this front splitter the body and the rear spoiler. There we go. And there we go, after several coats, there's the red car. Like I say, the camera does pink this out a little bit. It is a much deeper, darker red in real life. It's a beautiful colour. These paints go down absolutely wonderful. I've used these MAD, which is, I think it's Malden, Malden uh, Auto Design or something like that. I've used Paint Nuts, really good. All as good as each other, no problem at all. But these are the cheapest. These MAD ones, they're six seventy five delivered off eBay. Uh, and they have a website as well. They have a lot of paint. So it's a very economical way of getting car paint. And like I say, thin it with your own thinner. They're very, very forgiving. I'm putting this on quite wet now because I know I can. There's no reactions on the plastic whatsoever. Very, very reliable paint. So I highly recommend these, definitely. Just you may struggle with some more obscure colours. I guess that's just a chance you take, but beautiful paints. Really nice. We've used these several times now. And they've always performed and looked really, really good. So 
So pay attention to those wheel arches as well, quite easily forgotten. All around the windows, inside now, even though they're probably going to be painted black, I still like to paint them all, all around the boot shutter, the engine bay. Again, paint dry now, it's been dry for a good few hours, we're going to hit it with a Tamiya dark grey panel line wash, so I've mixed some black with grey to get a nice dark grey colour. I'm just going to let the capillary action carry the wash down all the panel lines. Like so. It's a case let it drive for half an hour and get some cotton buds, a little bit of Sansador, a little mineral spirits, uh, some tissue, and remove all the excess wash, leaving the wash behind in the panel line. So be nice and careful. Make sure your paint's fully cured. And just be gentle with those cotton buds and tissue. It's still very easy to wipe off paint, even when using lacquers and what have you. It's a lot easier than you think to wipe it off. So take your time and don't go too crazy. Now, badges was a GT2 uh, Porsche badge for the back. I'm not going to lie, I ruined that putting it on. It folded over on itself and self destroyed. So that's not going on. Uh, the Porsche badge for the bonnet, I'm going to use some. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're either hobby design or MSN design ones later on which we'll put on after the 2k so no decals on this whatsoever i would have liked to have that gt2 decal on the back but being a ham-fisted idiot i uh i went and ruined it but hey ho it is what it is and uh we'll get it sorted either way so 2k i've got my scott respirator which i wouldn't 2k without it's a full face covers my uh eyes mouth a lot Got the filter there, which is the probably the highest rated filter you can get without going air fed. Uh, that thing will filter out everything according to the data sheets. Um, I would highly recommend getting a good quality respirator. This one cost me about 130 quid originally. I know it's huge, but you're dealing with some pretty nasty chemical here. And uh, for me, the overkill is definitely worth it. So I've got that on. My left arm's covered up with cling film, as you can see. Uh, my right arm's not. I really should have it. I should get a suit or something to wear, but I don't. Uh, and we're going to wet all the surface. Got a fresh filter in there, fresh paper. We've got my box to the left to put the body in between coats and to let it dry in as well. Uh, we're going to test out our Revolution I water airbrush properly for the second time, but properly for the first time because I know how to use it now. So, first time round, I didn't go far enough back, so I wasn't getting as much of a mist pattern. Um, this time, I know what to do. So, we're also going to go with the two mixes of clear. So, we're going to mix two lots of 3 mil clear. Um, I wish I'd done four, because I think I did that on the Aston and had enough, um, because I ran out on my second coat. But anyway, we're going to mix a 3 to 1 to 1 mix to begin with. So, 3 mil of clear. 1 mil of activator, 1 mil of thinner. We're going to use that for the tack coat, uh, the first wet coat. Um, and then we're going to dispose of that. We're going to mix a brand new fresh one for the final coat. And it definitely worked better on the Astin. And I think it definitely worked better on this as well. So, well, we're trying. You're not wasting any more um 2k because i normally mix six to nine mil anyway so i'm mixing the same amount still just doing it in two separate stages um obviously when you're mixing your activator use the pipette throw it away mix the mix up together to get the catalyst working and then for the thinner use a brand new pipette you don't want to be putting any activator in the thinner because you contaminate it and ruin it and then give everything a good mix together it will go a little bit cloudy. It always does. And mix it up enough and it'll go nice and clear. And you're good to go. So using Gravity 2K as usual. Like I say, we've got an Iwata Revolution. It's a 0.3 mil is what we're going to use. I think it's a CR3 that I bought. They're about £115 roughly. So it's definitely the bottom end of the uh, Iwater range. But I was just intrigued to see what it would spray 2K like. Because I don't think I've ever sprayed 2K 
with anything really other than the apex so I was interested to see the results if it would spray any better and I hate to say it but I think it actually does I think it does improve the 2k quality <laughs> it kills me to say about my own product but I can't argue with the results and I'm not stupid enough to tell you no it doesn't because it does so it does off our anti-static brush uh, sprayed it just sprayed it with air to remove any dust and we're going to get our tack coat down so I'll come a little bit further back this time and we're going to put a nice tack coat down to begin with so that's just a nice thin coat all over the body not even trying to get it remotely glossy just getting enough of it down that we can physically see it we can let that off gas for 10 minutes it'll go ultra tacky and try to call the tack coat and when we put our wet coat down we reduce the risk significantly of us getting any runs so it's just a case of going all around getting all those angles all those recesses get those wheel arches all around the windows now i opted not to spray the wing mirrors and the door handles today i'm going to do those in this topic super clear later on they're small parts um uh, it can get a little bit flooded with 2k on the smaller part so we'll do them in just a lacquer clear later on it looks just as good on small parts and you can see just how thin a coat i'm putting down here i'm not going too mad we just want an even coat all over obviously my spray booth is on i've got the window shut um usual protocol procedure And there we go. Just make sure it's even, consistent. As you can see, we changed the stand. We've gone for the newer one to clean the stand. That way we don't run the risk of blowing any paint off or dust or debris of the other one. And there we go. Nice, even tack coat. I've got to say, even the tack coat looks better than usual. Really does. And then we'll put that in the plastic container and get our spoiler out and front splitter and again exactly the same give them a nice tack coat i'm going to show this as an entirety just because if somebody gets a little bit of use out of it watching me full process 2k something so be it if you don't want to see it you can skip forward to either both wet coats or right to the end i just leave it in in the hope that this may help someone first time viewer or someone looking to learn after 2k this is how i do it many ways you can do it this is my way but coming back from the model a bit with the airbrush is definitely getting the 2k down better the eye water definitely atomizes the paint better there is no getting away from that at all i can see that when i'm spraying it's a much finer controlled mist pattern i think that was a little fly just landed on my uh case and the worst case scenario is you get a nice wet coat of 2k and the fly lands in it i'd go mental if that happened so he was dispatched very quickly and again same with the spoiler nice taco just laid on all over Now, I know a lot of people are a bit scared of 2K. There are some safety implications. You need a good respirator. You need to be in a different room to anybody else in your house. Pets, animals, um, children, spouses, sisters, brothers, everyone. You can't be in the same room as other people. Um, you need a good re respirator, gloves, uh, an extractor booth. A lot. There are a lot of precautions needed, but... We're only spraying this every now and then. We're not spraying it every day. So you're fine. I've been using it for years. Never felt any real ill effects when I've used all my precautions properly. As long as you get a good quality mask, like a 3M mask, you'll be just fine. Um, it's definitely worth trying out. Trust me. Uh, nothing beats 2K. And people will be like, oh, it's too thick. It looks unrealistic. Well, if you flat it back and polish it, it doesn't. And that's the thing. Again, a lot of people are scared to flat back their clear coats and polish them. And no matter what clear coat it is, always flat it back and polish it and it will always look better. Trust me, 
I know what I'm talking about. It sounds very arrogant, but I've been there myself being lazy, thinking I can't be bothered flattening this. And I've done it, and I've thought it looks so much better flatted back. So it's well worth doing. You don't have to go and buy a model in specific polishes. We sell them at UMP. You can use car ones should you wish. You don't need to use expensive micromesh or sanding pads. Wet and dry will do. Just be careful sanding. Don't move any paint from any edges or burn through anywhere. And trust me, it will look a lot better. It's a learning curve. It really is. Right, anyway, this is the second coat now. It was left to off gas for 10 minutes. We put a second coat down on the spoiler. And what we're doing now is we're coming back with slightly slower passes over the body. Still come back off the body a bit. I'm probably four to five inches off the body here and applying a nice mist of 2K all over. And like I say, even here, I can see how much better this is laying down. Look how better that is. That's just the second tack coat and it's already beautiful. It's not perfect. But just remember to come further back. You need that overlay of the passes to get the paint nice and even. And there we go. Looking absolutely beautiful. I wish the camera would show truly how dark and deep red this paint is. I'll try and get some pictures at the end and pop them in because it is much darker than these cameras. I'm under a massive amount of lights uh, under my cameras. There's two huge three foot LED tubes in the spray booth. Uh, it doesn't even look that bright here, but it is, trust me. Um, and over the bench, there's several lights and it does kind of wash out colors sometimes every now and then. So just go around on the second coat. You want a nice even coat again. Don't go for the flawless finish on the second coat. Expect a little bit of orange peel. You can see it on the roof. It's not quite crystal clear, optically clear. And that is perfect. It's exactly what we want. Because we want this to off gas, flash off, tack, dry, whatever you want to call it. Go ultra sticky so we can put our final coat down, which will be our final gloss clear coat that will give us that flawless finish. And again, getting all those wheel arches. And there you go, beautiful finish, really nice already. I can definitely see an improvement in the 2K. Whether you can, I don't know, but I definitely can. But there we go. So we'll put that back in our paint storage for another 10 minutes. And then 10 minutes later, we'll come back, and we're going to mix up a fresh batch of 2K. So 3 mil of clear, 1 mil of activator, 1 mil of thinner again. And here we go, there's a final coat. So nice and slow. Nice bit of distance away from the model. And getting that nice clear coat down. And again, just going to clear, get your clear coat down, leave it, move on to the next bit, let its self leveling properties take hold. And then when you're done, come back and have a look. I like to do the third coat, put it back in the box for a minute or so while I do everything else, get it back out and have a look. And by that time, it's usually self-leveled. And if you can see any orange peel at all, give it another light coat because whatever it's left with now is how it will dry. So you want that flawless, optically clear, um, clear coat as you finish airbrushing because if not, it will dry with orange peel in it. So don't worry about it right now. Get all your code done all the way around. And like I say, what I'll do is I'll put it back in the box for a minute while I spray the spoiler and the front splitter. Just going to do the wheel arches. And then we'll get it back out and have a look. And if it needs a little bit more, it needs a little bit more. That's looking really, really good. So be very careful transferring it in and out of the boxes as well. You don't catch it or hit anything. It's easily done. Been there and done it. And again, we're just going to apply the coat to a smaller part so you don't need as much paint. So be aware of that. The worst thing that can happen now is you either drop it, which I've done before, or you get runs, which I've done before. And nobody wants the runs, do they? No, at all. Nor on the model paint. 
there we go nice gloss coat on that and then the rear spoiler as well Lots of angles to get on the spoiler. You need to get in the back as well in between that upper spoiler and a lower spoiler. It's quite tricky to do. But again, that's fine. So we'll now get the body back out, have a look, put those back in the booth. And then we'll get those back out later and double check. So a quick switch around. Have a quick look. And you can see the roof looks good. Side's got a little bit of orange peel still. Just a tad. The roof's got a tiny little bit by the look of it. So if you can see orange peel, like I say, leave it for that minute, let it settle, and then come back, as I've done here, probably about three or four minutes later. Let it all self-level. Got a little bit of dust in it, but nothing we can't polish out. And then just put a nice fine mist down. Don't need to go too heavy. We're not putting another full wet coat down. You're just putting a little bit of a mist coat down. You see how fine I'm putting down. I'm not going too heavy. Just putting a little bit more clear coat down because you want the self-leveling property to work and flatten out that clear coat. So when you look at this at the end, when you finish painting, it should look like glass. Perfect. If it doesn't, it needs more clear coat. Again, it's a mistake a lot of people make using 2K. They're not putting enough down. I understand they're worried about getting runs and what have you, but unless you really push 2K, you're not going to get the best out of it. It's a simple fact, unfortunately. But this clear coat is absolutely beautiful. Probably one of the best I've ever done, if I'm honest. Bar a few specks of dust, it is perfect. Very, very nice. And this will self-level even more over the next few coming, well, next hour or so. Looking wonderful. And again, we'll just check the smaller parts again while we're at it. And again, if you think it needs a little bit of a coat, just hit it up again. Don't go full spray on it. Don't put a full wet coat down because you'll get runs. Just take your time. Put a little bit of a mist coat down. Use the light. The light is a big indicator. Use it to angle the parts to look for the orange peel and make sure uh, it's gone, basically. Oh, we're not waffling on too long here. I'm just trying to help anybody that may be struggling with a 2K or the first time using it just to try and get the best out of it because I think people are quite often worried about pushing it too far when you can push it quite a lot. But look at that. It's absolutely beautiful. Once we flat this back and give it a good polish up, and this is just as the airbrush is done. You can just see a little bit there on the edge. Like I say, this is going to self-level a little bit more as we go. Beautiful colour. Really is nice, this card's red. And there we go. I think that's us about done. I think that's about the best we're going to get out of it. So what we'll do now is we'll put that back in the uh, storage box for a couple of hours. Leave the cave. Let it fully off gas. Start to sit in the cave while it's off gassing. And here we are. About five minutes later, actually. I can tell we're still in the booth because I've still got the cling film on my arm. Just having one final inspection before I commit. I thought I was finished, but I'm obviously not. Like I say, I filmed this a week ago, so I must have forgot. I just got it all back out to have a look. A little bit paranoid to make sure we had no orange peel. And it all looks really, really good. So now we'll pop it back in a storage case. I'm just going to have a quick last visual inspection.
knock the light off. I look outside, look at that. A little bit of dust in the roof, but beautifully optically clear. Very, very nice. Yep, very nice clear coat. Now this is probably two hours later. Might even be longer. And uh, you can see it's fully self-level. We've got no runs, no problems. We've got a little bit of dust here and there, but that'll all polish out later on. No problem whatsoever. Um, we've got beautiful spoiler, front split is all nice. Uh, like I say, we'll do the door mirrors. I don't know what I'm doing there. Hello, yeah. I think I'm talking to you like while I'm live, yeah. <laughs> uh, the door mirrors and the mirrors we'll do later of UV Supercut uh, from Mr. Hobby. Uh, but I'm happy with that 2K. It's beautiful. Very, very nice. Like I say, we're going to flat it all back, polish it up so it loses a bit of that thickness that it has. Uh, but nothing will be 2K out of the bottle. Nothing at all. Um, it's just a fact. You can get good finishes with rattle cans. I agree. I've done it. I've got the RX-7 to show it. You can get good finishes with lacquer clears, with water-based clears, but nothing is as easy as 2K. Um, and I definitely hate to say it, but I think the Revolution Eye Water has helped here as is mixing that final coat. And there we go, there's the true color red, as you can see it. It's a beautiful red color. This is a few hours later again, just having a quick look. And uh, yeah, we've got a nice 2K clear coat. Like I say, once we've polished that up, that's gonna look absolutely beautiful. It really is. Anyway, there we go, I've popped on for enough. Let's go back to me. Right, there we go, so we're done. Uh, Wonderful, absolutely beautiful. That MAD touch of paint is beautiful. Sprays absolutely flawlessly, really does. Cheap as well, six ninety five a bottle. Uh, you can easily do two, three cars with a bottle of that stuff. So good value for money as well. Definitely something I'm going to be using a lot more of in future um, for general colours. I think anything more specific, you can have to still go to your usual sources, but. Overall, it looks good. The 2K looks phenomenal on this. That Iwata Revolution, I really hate to say it, it has made a difference to the 2K, and that is going to become my 2K brush. For anybody who starts, the Apexes, I've still got them. They're still there. It's still a metallic go-to brush. It'll still get used. But I've literally, I'm going to reiterate it because I know people are going to start shit staring about this and commenting. I just really miss my Iwatas. Uh, Roland got a HPC Plus on my recommendation. It's always been the airbrush I'd recommend to people. And it got my mind thinking. And I thought, you know what? I'd really like to have my old airbrush back. So I got one. And I'm loving it again. I was interested to see if the eye water make a difference on 2K. Because I don't think I've actually ever used an eye water for 2K. I think it's the first time today I had. And uh, I think it's made a difference. I really do. So you make your minds up over it. There was a comment left by uh, Justin. On one of my videos saying it was like hitting a bee with a sledgehammer using a high-end airbrush. I don't know, mate. I've got to disagree with you there. I, I can make an informed opinion on this because I've used them. Over the years, I've used near enough every airbrush that I water and Harder Steenbeck make. Um, and I've used cheap airbrushes like the Neo, Chinese, Chinese airbrushes, Badgers, I water Harder Steenbecks, the Apex. I've used loads. And I hate to say it, but Things like the eye waters, they do paint better than cheaper airbrushes. It's just a fact. They atomize the paint better. They're more efficient. They're, they're better made. It, it's just the, the difference of an airbrush costing twice the price of another one. It's the same as buying a Mercedes over a Ford. You're going to get a better car. It's as simple as that. Um, but I have used all these. I can make an informed opinion on my own basis. Um... Whether you think it's worth the cost is different. That's a different case in point. That's totally different. But to say it's like hitting a bee with a sledgehammer, I think it's a little bit unfair, that, to be honest. I think it is. Uh, but everyone's attached to their opinion. There is. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to stick with mine. I'm going to keep using my waters. I love them. Always have, always will. And it's nice to have them back. I've used the Apexes for four years. They've performed flawlessly all that time. Still got them. They're going nowhere. But I'm going to mix it up with the uh, eye waters as well. I don't want any jungle drums going and the smoke signals and people gossiping everywhere. Oh, this and that. Just did it because I wanted to. And I'm glad I did. I've missed my old HPC Plus. It's like an old friend. 
it was always my favourite airbrush out of all of them I had, and I'm, I'm glad to have it back in the Arsenal. So, there we go. If anyone's got any issues or questions about that, PM me. Don't be talking about me behind my back, because I know what this community's like sometimes. Come and talk to me. But anyway, that's where that's at today. DB11's behind me here. I couldn't be bothered putting all that away. Uh, I've spent hours today masking up the interior on that. That is done. Um, and I don't even know what we're going to work on next. It'll probably be the DB11 video out next. And I'm desperately going to do a bench update. I am way behind on my bench updates. But I feel like crap. So doing this video today was a struggle enough. It is. And as you can see, I'm breathless. I'm trying to talk. It's, it's taken the, uh, the wind out my sails, that is for sure. So here we go. Don't get COVID. It sucks. And I don't even feel that bad off it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's where we're at today. As always, you'll support the channel. There's a PayPal me, uh, buy me a coffee, and a PayPal, a PayPal, a patron link down below. Become a patron tier two or higher. Get two week release on all the videos. Uh, after that, they go on ISM. So you still get to see them anyway. Uh, becoming a patron, you know, you keep these videos going and the daily live streams as well. Links to everything else down below. I'm not going to go through it all because there's too much to say. Um, and of course, make sure you sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, click that bell notification so you get notified of all the latest videos. And please leave a comment. Love reading all your feedback and comments. Uh, and I will see you all for the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.